I'm your host, Sam Works. You guys are listening to Whatever Works. You guys can find us um, on basically any streaming platform, you know, Apple, Spotify, all that good stuff. Um, welcome back. Usually my shows are on Sunday nights, but every other Wednesday we are here live at the studio. Um, let me just introduce my boy. Go ahead. I am the co-host, Kyle Kerrigan. You already know what it is. Uh, shout out to sec- Secondhand Sam in Ukaipa. He has everything that you need thrift wise um tonight our guest is jaw honey he's a lot of things ranging from recording artist actor entertainer he has influence on social media where he built his brand as an entertainer on multiple levels thank you for thank you for coming uh thank you for having me jaw speaking jaw let's go okay anywho so you are a guest for tonight we have a whole hour with you uh, I'm, I'm excited to know you. Actually, Kyle, he's the one that invited you tonight. Uh, so you are his special guest as well as mine. Uh, so I just want to have the people, you know, figure out who you are and what you mean to society. Uh, so, Ja, honey, first of all, where, where did that name come from? Uh, that it was an injury, and uh, I literally mm-hmm. broke my jaw. And there's a video of it. I can show you guys in a second, but... Uh, yeah, that started, and then there's other things I shouldn't say, but there's a lot to it. I mean, I like to write and stuff, so Jaw Honey isn't just one thing, but in terms of origination, I mean, that injury happened, and it's pretty obvious that that really did something to me, because I had my mouth wired for two months, so. No kidding. Yeah, and I, I was th- definitely listening to that Kanye song leading up to the, you know, surgery, because that thing, is it was weird. You know, within three days, I had to, like, go in and do something there's a plate in there now there's four screws still in there and for two months i had it wired for whatever yeah. um so yeah that's the best way i could put it and honestly jaw honey is just like what comes out your mouth like i'm a writer so that's part of it is like what is jaw honey well lyrics is jaw honey there you go so, yeah i like yeah, that there we go um you mind if i ask uh how did you break your jaw uh <laughs> <laughs> Nothing bad happened. It was it was an athletic injury. You feel me? Uh, well, okay, those American Ninja Warrior type things. Right. Like I, I was on the training thing. I did it, and then the homie over there at the gym uh, hyped me up, and he's like, "Hey, you want to do it again? We'll post it on um, Instagram." And I'm like, "Yeah, I could do it again. I just did it." <laughs> but I was gassed because it was a lot. Like I've never even done it before. So, anyways, I go up there, and he's recording, and I. Whether I'm gas or not, I end up hitting the ceiling and missing my next one. So I get into a clenched fist and like I can't grab the next one. And then I fell backwards and there was a bar there and uh, I landed on that bar oh, no. and it cracked me. And that shouldn't have been there either. It was a, like a removable thing. And it was like the circumstances sucked. I'll try and change my life. Go to the gym. I'm never doing that again. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Was it uh, like the pull-up uh, suicide bars, or w- what was the... Uh, it's like it goes flat, and then up, and then flat, okay. and then down. So like the, the stairs, like the staircase oh, yeah. uh, climb, basically? Like, no, like that. Like a jungle gym? Like Yeah, like a jungle gym, but it's like got to be at least whatever, 14 feet long. I don't know what the hell. I don't know. If, you know uh, but yeah, it's one of those, and uh, I missed the thing at the top because... I hit the ceiling, all right? They they didn't go by, a ju- they were supposed to have another six inches of clearance and they didn't, let me, that's all I'm gonna say about that. <laughs> yeah. So okay. whatever happened wasn't necessarily my fault and we were able to prove so. Right, oh, that's go, crazy, yeah. man. And how long, you said you had your mouth wired for like two months? Uh, eight weeks, six to eight weeks, I don't remember exactly because there was a certain point where even when you take it off, uh, you're so. eating, uh, pudding type i was eating like tuna tartare without the chips you know oh, if you know sushi yeah. like just because it was mushy so anything mushy i was doing uh i was still adjusted to the straw so literally at that point i was sucking through my teeth and then little by little it opened till like about a month i had a fingerish oh no and ah. then uh you know two months two fingerish whatever yeah. until i don't want to tell you how many fingers i fit in there now <laughs> 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 how, how long ago was that um that 
Must have been January 2017. Of course, it has to be because I know that. Um, so what is that? Five years almost. Dang, but yeah. that's why I can really laugh. About it. it took me a year to watch the video because oh, I didn't want to relive what happened because I didn't even realize how serious it was till I got to the doctor. And then they were like, my mom saw me. She's like, you should go to the hospital. And I drove to the hospital by myself. And then come to find out, they're like, yo, there's a fracture there and also your arm. And so they put me in a cast and yeah. Um, so it happened crazy. five years ago. Yeah. So it's like a five year anniversary, dude. Yeah. yeah. Is it, Jim? Dude, it is January. what day? You darn tooting it. This is five days. Like I think it was like January 27, I think. Okay. Something like oh, that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's just up. about the five year. And to be honest, it's been a wild five years because at that point I started, you start living your second life. Because you're right, like, I right. could have either died or had something go wrong. And that's why it's really hard to disappoint me now. Like, yeah. as long as I got my arms and my legs, you know, I'm pretty, because of that, like, good Dang, luck keeping really me there. It really opened your eyes, huh? Yeah. yeah uh, because for that two-month period, I saw what it was like to, I don't want to say be ugly and stuff, but, like, to look like... I, I was so <laughs> busted and I'm shining like Frankenstein at girls like even if I had a chance and the swelling went down I, I couldn't smile because you can't open your mouth and it yeah. looks like <laughs> that girl shouldn't be talking to you and she it doesn't because nobody really knows off the bat unless yeah. you explain I have it wired because I broke my jaw it looks you just crazy. look like a creeper just, ah. and, <laughs> you, that's how, exactly what yeah. it's like going to a movie theater and like got, if you get any attention good luck you know. And you can't really talk, right? No, like, I'm talking like this, but who wants to talk to me? I'm <laughs> yeah. telling you, like I was going like this. Yeah. yeah. Y'all trying to compliment a girl and she's like not feeling it. <laughs> What'd you say? Yeah. I didn't even try to go that far. Yeah. I, I knew what, I, I can see the future in that situation. Oh, uh, just like this ain't gonna work out. <laughs> this is not, this shouldn't I mean, Well, you know what, maybe there's people out there. And you know what, that's how, if you find a girl that would look through that, that's also what I learned. If someone dealt with you in that position, y you might so have to, you know, r realize that. Yeah, and, like, that's kind of like being in, like, your worst spot, right? Because, I mean, you really couldn't, like, talk, eat, and do all this crazy stuff. And um, I think about that. Like, if I became, like, really successful in the future and then I found a girl, is it because she's with me because of, like, where I'm at? You know what I mean? Like, I'd rather have oh, meet yeah. someone at my lowest, you know? Let yeah, me tell you, okay, yeah. one thing about a friend's uncle. He's a lieutenant making probably over 200 a year, probably more with investments, whatever. He goes around to the bar. From what I've heard stories do, he tells them he's like a parrot trainer. Just so, like, <laughs> if they like him, they really like him, and it's not about his status. Wow. You feel me? I work at um, Burger King. Yeah, I flip patties. Well, yeah. if you have money like that, <laughs> yeah. I would assume people with money would do, like, tests like that. Yeah, I would you assume. know, he wouldn't care either. Yeah, you know? no. So yeah. it's like, let's see if she, if she actually is worth it. Because... It's, it's gonna be hard to see through, you know, what's really going parrot on. Parrot trainer. <laughs> yeah, good luck. If you like that parrot trainer, you must really like that parrot yeah. trainer. And then shout out to parrot trainers. He like <laughs> takes her back to his pad, and then she thinks nothing of it, but then like, sees this huge ass, huge mansion and stuff. You know, he's like, "What? I thought you were a parrot trainer." He's like, "I train two hundred parrots." Yeah. You know? like, <laughs> when I get a mansion, it's gonna be like. If you guys seen Crimson Peak, where it looks like no one lives there, right. but it's just like a castle because yeah, nobody yeah. comes there. But why would they start coming then? Yeah, yeah. Right. I feel like if, if they want to hang out right now, they can. But well, I don't you know, know. You're about to see it. I it, do want people there, but I just feel like that's what it would end up looking like, right. like a gothic castle. There's um, I don't know if it's in Italy or something, but it's across the world, and basically, they made a whole city of just castles. Oh, right? Really? And I like. You would think that's like, oh man, you just see a whole city of castles. That's amazing, but really, it just really standardized it and it didn't really um, add any like bouginess to it, you know. And actually, that whole city is abandoned. Really? Yeah. And they're they're trying to have people live there, and they can't do it. So like they're, you know, shooting out benefits out, you know, even out here to the U.S. Like, hey, if you come here, you can buy this castle, like for super like dirt cheap. You know what I mean? Because like. They want people to live there, but no one's living there. For whatever reason, I'm not too sure. Like, who doesn't want a castle, you know? But if your yeah. castle looks like his castle, it looks like her castle, like, there's, there's no, like, <laughs> you know, you're not really standing out, you know? So. Yeah, I'm going to look up that yeah. island of castles, and I can't imagine why they're having trouble moving people there. Yeah, I mean, maybe it's in the middle of nowhere as well, you know? So oh, it's not sure, next to, yeah. like, the next city. There's not, a like, a Costco around, you know? If there's food, there's people that will take that castle off her. 
Yeah. 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 <laughs> but I'm, that's why I'm going to look into it. Yeah. Right, cool, cool. So, uh, Jaw Honey, can I call you just Jaw for short? Yeah, Jaws. Jaws is nice. All right. So, tell us a little more about yourself. Um, I'm also uh, dabbling in other things because I like just, I realize I like entertainment in general. Like, I even did journalism for a little while, and it gave me certain skills that ended up being useful from the other end. Just, like, working behind a camera helped me in front of it because mm. having an idea of, like, what's going on in the image, lighting, and learning all those. I did a lot of tech stuff just to, like, force my way into people's tech sets. Like, I literally took production classes eventually to get into people's productions but i had to learn along the way with uh, them yeah. and but i i had no problem with it because i've seen most of the stuff even though i realized uh the longer i'm behind the camera it's like the less time i'm in front of it so i uh, i kind of take those offers more now because for whatever reason i feel like that's what i like to do in this time in my life and i still have some goals that i want to hit so uh right now it's like short films and stuff uh we did an assassin's creed modern and it was like literally 18 minutes of like a 20 person cast that we put together and the lighting etc it looked like a movie and the point is to try to show it to people and get them to buy into something hopefully assassin's creed people whatever ubisoft but um we did another anime live action one um i've personally been in a commercial which i'll tell you about that but how i got into it is um I don't know how I got it, but this injury definitely brought me to all this stuff. Is when I realized, like, yo, just do it. I don't care. Yeah. I really don't care. Nobody else cares. I care. And that injury was like, oh, God, what if this happened permanently? So right. that uh, got me into this. Anyways, the commercial. Should I? Yeah, what's your commercial? Yeah. What, what were you in? Uh, it was an Old Spice commercial. And honestly, uh. it's one of those right place, right time. I took an offer with no money in my pocket got a ride to san francisco i i found this through should i shout out an app that i got the job through or no yeah go for it yeah, well it was backstage it, yeah. casting so there you go I information <laughs> for you there's other ones which if we get to i'll talk but uh from what i recall it was through that and it was just like a tw 25 bucks or something for like a three days of like 40 hours covered or whatever it was for me it was like 600 dollars, and i got into a car with somebody to go get it you know for that weekend yeah. i've never been to san francisco I have twenty dollars in my pocket. I owe the guy gas, and I'm like, "Yeah, yeah you'll get it soon, my guy." And and <laughs> but I'm successful. Well, well, no, he he got it. But um, what I had to wait for the next day for my like an old check to go into my account and my whatever. I was I I took these opportunities that uh that got me that commercial. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and other people partied the night before. It was the third night that I'm working the San Francisco event. It was a uh, cluster fest, Comedy Central or whatever. I'm working Old Spice with a t-shirt on. Like, I still have the deodorant that I wore today that they gave me from this event, which hey. was about three years ago. But I still, ha <laughs> I still have that one because it's not still the only fresh. one. Yeah. It's, yeah. I, I, there's still some. Okay, yeah. there's, you know, I did well. Old Spice, man. You got to get some. Old Spice yeah. and Comedy Central, apparently. It was all right. But, um, uh, okay, so I got that because on the third day, uh, they needed someone to just tap the guy on the shoulder for their comedy central like one day whatever it was it was a commercial for like independence day for comedy central okay and old spice it was a mashup right i was yeah. on the channel of okay that's what it was and they ended up giving me a line and that's how i got the commercial like there's not supposed to be a line in it people turned it down because they didn't want to do the shoulder tap because they're like i'm hungover i don't want to shout him out because he's gonna be sad that i said this but i was the only one that was hydrated enough to do it and i i'm like <laughs> you crazy. know what i don't care if it's just my hand you never know what if my face shows i'm not in a position not to take this opportunity yeah, yeah. they're like you know what you have a line and everyone dies around me because they all said no because they're like hung over from the night before in san francisco oh sorry um and yeah i got it that's how that aired in this area so at that time it was like july 4th it aired here and i found out through a friend to, to, to be like wow it really was a real thing uh you like told you like, yeah, and I'm, <laughs> that was a i think that was right after my semester that i did a, a shakespeare play for, it was my first play but that gave me some confidence to go up there oh, which one um, we did As You Like It in, oh, at Chafee. Okay, yeah. uh, it must have been spring 19, something like And it must have been May 19 when I did that commercial, which is uh, it's just uh, funny how it happened because I, I shouldn't have been. That was like I jumped steps, and now it looks like I, I've done something. But 
it was because I went with 20 bucks in my pocket to San Francisco in a car full of two guys that were really cool and the great, like, God sent, even though they're your typical frat guys that I'm not really used to but it's funny to be around but then you're in the car together for seven hours and they kind of they're <laughs> o- they're kind of over me because i talk too and yeah. and then i have to shut up for a while because i'm like these guys like each other more than they like me but we're going yeah. to san francisco yeah. and uh that that's one of the things that could go on but yeah literally yeah. that's like that's almost you know the universe helps people out that actually put in work and like you took the risk $20 yeah. in your pocket $20. and you took you. the risk to go seven hours away for a potential And commercial. it's hard to recommend that someone do it. But if you have that type of like, I, it was must have been necessity. I was like, there's no, I can't turn it down. I don't have $600 to say no to or whatever. It might have been more. I don't really, it was enough to convince me to get into a car that the company got the other workers to take me. It wasn't like I met some strangers. The company referred that these people were already driving up. So. Uh, okay, but yeah. but for the most part, yes. Thank you for noticing, because uh, some people think it's just, I don't know what. The, but it's not gonna. A lot of times, it's not gonna happen the way you really think. That's how yeah. mine went, and, and right place, right time. I said yes to a lot of things that a lot of people would have said no to. That's inspiring. Yeah, 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 yeah no, it is, really, it is. <laughs> really is. So does it not air anymore? Is it over or? Because well, it's on the YouTube. Yeah. 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 There, okay. There's like a. It's two uh, comedians going at it in like a roast, uh, and then it's it's really a commercial for the Old Spice, the these monsters on on the deodorant battling, and it's the comedians battling, and then I come in and put them back in a reality, and I'm like, hey guys, I need you to get down from there. <laughs> is that, is that, is that yeah. your line? That's the line. <laughs> and my uh, friends goof on me all the time because literally that's just what it might be one day. Like sometimes it, that's what I do. And it was because I pre- I did a bunch of preparing for that one l- opportunity of me, you know, touching him on the shoulder, and then it ended up cool, way that's cooler funny. than you would have thought going in. That's crazy. Yeah, that's pretty crazy. I, uh, I did some auditions um, in my younger days, you know, and uh, one of them was a Sobe commercial, <laughs> and my brother went with me, and uh, since he was there, they were like, oh, you want to try out too? Uh, needless to say, we didn't get the part, um, but I, I'm sure if it was like a one-liner, I could probably really add some enthusiasm or enthusiasm to it, you know, and like yeah. put some effort to it. But they, you show up, bro, they give you this whole page and like, all right, we'll see you in 20 minutes. Remember your lines. Mm. And I never done like any drama or like theater or anything like that. So it's like for me, I'm like, how do I remember lines, dude? Like I'll just like repeat, repeat, repeat. <laughs> and then uh, we saw this one guy aud- audition um, in front of us we went on and he killed it and then like mm-hmm. i even took some of his like hand motions and stuff you know i'm all copying you know? <laughs> yeah. but like for him it was more genuine you know what yeah. I mean? so it was more natural and it came to him more naturally me i was a brick barely moving my fingers and like study like i, was, I couldn't get I'm my gonna tell, I, i've seen that happen in front of me so i just did everything i could to learn what it's gonna take for that not to happen and yeah. then eventually once you like face that enough times, you're more worried about how well you can do than uh, if I'm gonna be shaking. Oh yeah. Well, honestly, our our phone's ringing right now. It looks like we might have a caller, but we're gonna find that. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah, and we didn't even give you guys the the number line. Oh yeah, we forgot. To do that's <laughs> impressive. No. I would n- maybe not been able to do that. Okay. Well, I guess the guy couldn't come through. Oh, it's all good. But if you guys do have um, like stories or anything like that or questions, comments or concerns for Jaw Honey, Kyle and me, you guys can call in at 888-909-1050. That's 888-909-1050. The lines are open. Uh, again, before we continue our, our talk with Jaw Honey, I just want to give a shout out to Second Street Thrift Store. Uh, Sam Powers, that's, the, that's his name. That's the game. Uh, go check it out. He's over by USA Subs over in Ukaipa Boulevard. Um, they kind of just opened what a couple years ago. Yeah, a couple years ago. Yeah, so they're they're freshly new, and you know, I know everyone likes to help out the small businesses because they're the hard workers and they deserve the most. So go check them out; they're really cool. But we have Jaw Honey here. Um, a little recap: he's a he's an artist. He does production. Uh, he was in a commercial, an Old Spice commercial. If you guys want to 
see that commercial how do you, how do they find on youtube um, what's the title the easiest oh uh on youtube hmm, it's good luck for, for me to explain that but if you're on instagram it would be really easy because jawhoney.tv has it mm. on like the front Johnny. page and it's me in a red shirt with dark hair um that jawhoney.tv has it and actually jawhoney.tv the website has the it's called the tv section you press on tv and literally it's one of five videos which is the commercial i can't on youtube it's called like two comedians roast each other during uh go to, uh, I, big yeah. old name yeah, like you're not name. gonna find it good luck i'm not gonna find it looking that way uh -huh. but uh yeah uh those are the easiest ways at jawhoney is the easiest way to find me and that and those videos you will eventually find those yeah okay, okay. your little one-liner your 15 yeah. minutes of <laughs> it, it was it 15 it was not even like i did it was two takes i nailed it and they clapped it out and they literally gave me a rap like uh hey he's rapped and they clapped it out as a 10-man crew for my one line that they walked me into and then everyone had to watch me get clapped like I, I, you make you make it sound yeah pause <laughs> pause he says <laughs> my, my friend zina love that what, what was that no, no, you're good. Um, so basically, like everyone else had to watch you get applaud. Applauded. <laughs> <laughs> That's better yeah. than the other word, huh? That's fine. You can say that. Yeah, I could. Unfortunately, I can't say that yeah. on the radio. You know what? You know what's crazy? Uh, I did production when I was in high school, and I think I talked about this before on my show. But like being behind the cameras and learning like the effects and everything, kind of ruined the way I watch movies. I mm. I'm oh this is yeah, this opens that part up. Yeah, it's yeah. like a balance of not letting it become too much behind the scenes. Like I try that's why it's fun a little bit being in front of it cuz as an actor I got to pretend all that stuff's not there anyway. So yeah. my experience doesn't in that situation isn't. But then once you're behind the camera it starts like you're right. You mix it and it, it, the magic is going to go away a little right, bit. Right. So now I'm like 90% content watching, 10% dealing with behind the scenes of to ruin it for myself that's right. my so yeah that's a good thing you brought up because it's yeah. kind of hard not ruining content for yourself when you're trying to do exactly. the stuff yeah like a, a good example is like you know you watch a horror movie and they, they light a match and walk down to the basement and like that flame doesn't illuminate enough light for it to actually <laughs> show the people so they put they literally beam a flashlight at the person walking down <laughs> yeah. the attic and it's like dude come it's on like, i know there's a flashlight there you know what i mean movie like, magic that, yeah the, the fact that i could just imagine it and i haven't even seen that clip but yeah, yeah there's a lot of that it's so cheesy and like another thing um like with the avengers you know like i, I wonder if like the actors and the directors are just like they're over it you know they don't even want to see it when it comes out because they've you know, they played the part. They've been there the whole time, and they've seen everything. The superhero uh, movies, I feel like they dip out as fast as they can. As fast as they can say no to how big the money is. You know, like, I just heard Ben Affleck, they, Matt Damon helped break him out of Batman because he was, like, not happy with it. And then they did a... What did he convince? I forgot what Matt... Oh, the one with... Uh, Mar not Scorsese. Really, Scott just did one. What is it? Last Duel or something? Anyway, whatever. Yeah, so he, you're right. The superhero thing must eventually kind of get old. As an actor, you like taking on new things because it, it right. anything can get boring. Yeah. Your favorite role. Like, I used, I wanted to play villain roles, and now that's what I'm getting. And now I'm like, you know what? Maybe one time I want to carry it as, like, the good guy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> maybe. Like, I, yeah. I can put on a more good guy look if I need to, but obviously – in terms of like who who people have around, I look like I would play the villain more than a lot of people. Right. So yeah. and I I'm not mad about it, but I am getting close to wanting you know wanting yeah. to switch already. Yeah. And they yeah. do it for like six years or whatever. Right. Yeah. And how long have you been um, auditioning and doing all that? Production uh, stuff? The first uh, musical theater class was um, right after that. About six months after that injury was fall 2017. Uh, I took my first musical theater. I've never done it in high school, and that's why I'm so... Uh, it's all brand new to me, like a whole new world, literally, with that song opened up. How much time we got? We got five minutes. Oh, okay, fire. Um, so that was the beginning of when I took it seriously, and what is fall 17, we're just... Let's just say it was fall, four years-ish, right? Because fall 21 was just a month ago or whatever. So about four years, and 
within that first year i got lucky with that old spice thing so a lot yeah. of things have been showing themselves to me where it encourages me but at the same time like i'm going through exactly what they talk about like i'm gonna be that the story of like dwayne johnson when he's like i had eight dollars in my pocket before it worked out for me yeah, <laughs> yeah. But that's how i feel like it's gonna take me to like be at the total end of your wits but I don't really mind because I've seen some things that were worse in the sense of like the injury, which just opened up my eyes to what really is an obstacle, you know, and that, that, that's why it all goes back to that injury. And then I literally opened even another business. I was tutoring kids. Uh, like I was really good at math. Okay. I, believe it or not, I'm very like good at math. Second grade math. Uh, no. no. <laughs> that is me. I'm good at math. I teach third graders no, math. No, 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 no. I, I was I was a 4.0 up until Algebra 2, which I was in sophomore in high school. So I had that down. I didn't teach calculus or none at pre-cal. But I went as far as that. The X and Ys and stuff. I was killing it. For high school kids to get out of school, I'm very uh, helpful in terms of math and English. I got that down. I can get you through college. I can get you into college, all right? <laughs> yeah. I'm He's not going to talk John about Hardy. that, but that's part of my business at the time. And then I realized if I'm going to put this type of energy in it, I better pick something that uh, I'm more motivated for in the long term. And the people you're dealing with aren't you guys. I'm dealing with, like, 16-year-old kids, which yeah, it, that's nice. I'm helping them, but I'm like, it's not the time for me yet to be this sensei for these kids. I'm like, I still need a sensei, which brings me to Cobra Kai, best show ever. Yeah, that's how. And then I got to musical theater. Once I realized, like, I couldn't put that other stuff. I'm like, I'm not gonna tell anybody about this anymore. And so, if that helps somebody, like, I didn't. For the first time in my life, I was like, I'm not telling anybody because really? I don't need to hear it at all. Like, this is if like I, I need to at least find out on my own. And then before you knew it, the first class they made you go up there read a script with people. And I'd never even done that. I'm like, how do you guys uh, pretend, you know? <laughs> how, do you, how do you guys act? <laughs> there, we yeah. did a Beauty and the Beast, them just running after the beast or something. I was supposed to play like Cogsworth, the clock, I think. I don't remember. I was like, Who's Cogsworth, <laughs> dude? I'm like, is it the candle? And it was <laughs> not. Like, no, you're the <laughs> clock. <laughs> that was my first experience of musical theater. Like my first yeah. day, they made me run around on the stage. And it was, shout out. Wow. Unbelievable. Krista Havenhill, that, that was my teacher for that class. Shout out Kelly Ford. There's so many. This is all Chafee. So many people helped me. But um, in terms of theater, they really uh, opened up a lot of opportunities. They allowed us to go up there without worrying about any type of stage fight. Like, cause, you know, I kind of dealt with it in class. I, so that way, when I showed up to that day where they were asking me to do the line... I didn't even stutter on the line, but I'll tell you, most people are going to stutter when they say go, and if you don't get it, we're doing, like, there's noise coming in between your takes, and they're like, either get it or this isn't going to work out, and if I wasn't trained the way I did for, like, whatever, that one straight year of, like, 12-hour days at literally either theater or movies, that helped me. Yeah, where are we? You know, uh, that's 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 actually interesting. You said Chafee, because after the break, I actually want to talk to you about a mutual friend we have that you met through Chafee. Yeah. Ah, so. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's yeah. exciting. How much more time we got, Paul? We got one minute left. One, one minute. minute left. All right. Well, before we go out uh, again, I just want to give a shout out to Second uh, Thrift Second Street Thrift Store. Second Chance Thrift Store. Second Chance. Thank you, man. I'm fired. Second Chance. Um, <laughs> yeah. Go in there. The owner, his name's Sam Powers. He's a real cool guy. They have a bunch of variety of stuff. You know, you can you can get lost on how much stuff they have. So go check them out. Yeah, it's after Christmas, so they should have some new inventory, too. Yeah, there you go. And it's yeah. in Ukaipa on 2nd Street. Um, and again, you guys are listening to Whatever Works. I'm Sam Works. I'm Kyle Kerrigan. I'm Jaws at Jaw Honey. Hey, there guys. we go. All right, okay. you guys. Uh, we're going to go on a quick break, but stay tuned. Listen in. You guys are listening on 1050, 102.3, and 106.5. KCAA Loma Linda, 10.50 a.m., 106.5 FM, and now 102.3 FM. How you doing? This is Gary Garver. In today's society, the majority of people are not getting enough sleep. I know I'm not. If you're like me and having problems getting a good night's rest, whether it's health or stress-related, I have a solution for you. South Pacific Sleep Lab. South Pacific Sleep Lab will do an evaluation of your sleep pattern and will provide a comprehensive study so you can start getting a restful, peaceful night of sleep. 
They take all types of insurance, which will cover your cost of the evaluation, and they will even provide transportation to their offices at no cost to you. For more information, contact Tony at 310-999-1887. That's 310-999-1887. Tony even stays awake all night, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, so you can sleep better and rest easy. South Pacific Sleep Lab, start feeling better and getting a great night of sleep today. Hi, I'm food critic Alan Borgen, and I'm excited to tell you about a small local company called Soaring Swine Acres that creates and sells over 300 delicious tasting and unique jams, jellies, honeys, sauces, pickled products, and their new Voodoo Queen holistic teas that you can't find anywhere else. You can visit Soaring Swine Acres store in Ukaipa, or you can purchase their products on their website, SoaringSwineAcres.com. That's S-O-A-R-I-N-G-S-W-I-N-E, Acres, A-C-R-E-S.com. Save your such delicious items like rosemary pear jelly, ginger orange jam, mmm, cherry chili jam. Visit them at SoaringSwineAcres.com. That's SoaringSwineAcres.com. Take it from me, food critic Alan Borgen. These food products are delicious. That's SoaringSwineAcres.com. Happy eating. Tehebo Tea Club's original Pure Pouty Arco Super Tea helps build red corpuscles in the blood which carry oxygen to our organs and cells. Our organs and cells need oxygen to regenerate themselves. The immune system needs oxygen to develop and cancer dies in oxygen. So the tea is great for healthy people because it helps build the immune system and it can truly be miraculous for someone fighting a potentially life-threatening disease due to an infection, diabetes, or cancer. The tea is also organic and naturally caffeine-free. A one-pound package of tea is $49.95, which includes shipping. To order, please visit TeheboTeaClub.com. Tehebo is spelled T like Tom, A-H-E-E-B like boy, O, then continue with the word T and then the word club. The complete website is TehuboTeaClub.com or call us at 818-610-8088, Monday through Saturday, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. California time. That's 818-610-8088, TehuboTeaClub.com. BST Realty reminds all area listeners to please get out and donate blood to salute the brave men and women of our armed forces that are overseas. Every pint of blood donated locally can save one or two brave soldiers overseas. So salute our troops, give back the gift of life by giving the gift of blood. That's BST Realty, serving the area with pride and integrity. Whether you're buying, selling, leasing, or renting, or for more info, call them today at 951-834-5692. That's 834-5692. That's BST Realty on the air because they care proudly serving the community and supporting our troops Bob Vila here with my home improvement tip of the day you probably know that ice dams are the ridges of ice that form along the edges of roofs during cold weather they occur when heated air in your home rises and gets up into the attic the warm air heats the underside of the roof that causes snow on top to melt and drain down the roof until it reaches the cold overhang. There, it refreezes, forming an ice dam. Water from melted snow backs up behind the ice dam and can leak into the house and cause major damage. The best way to avoid ice dams is to use insulation to seal the attic from rising warm air. If you get an ice dam anyway, you'll probably need to consult an energy-savvy contractor. But in the meantime, there's a fix that might get you through the crisis. Find a pair of old nylons and fill one of the legs with ice melting crystals. Drape the nylons up on the roof so that one end crosses the ice dam and the gutter. The chemicals will eventually melt that section of the ice, creating a gap for water to escape. Get more info at BobVila.com and right here at home with me, Bob Vila. It's time to shop in the cool, relaxed comfort of the Tri-City Shopping Center in Redlands, conveniently located on the I-10 freeway between the Alabama and Tennessee exits. Bring the kids, too, and watch them play in the only indoor fun center, High Five Indoor Playground, where parents are welcomed on the playground. Birthday celebrations are encouraged, so make plans for some great fun at the mall. More reasons why the Tri-City Center is called the Mall with a Heart. 
What does reinforced mean to grapes? It means forcing pests out with all over protection from mealy bugs and nematodes to help vineyards grow their strongest. And that's exactly the kind of support grapes get from Movetto Insecticide. With its unique two-way movement that works up through the shoot and down to the roots, Movetto protects grapes from above and below ground pests to help improve root health and crop quality. So talk to your local retailer about Movento or visit us online at movento.us to learn more. Always read and follow label directions. K C A A Diamonds in the gutter and you gotta go fish on Suicide notes why they leave them in the kitchen listening to whatever works i am your host sam works kyle kerrigan and jaws at jaw honey let's go guys um if you guys are just tuning in uh <laughs> there's the air horns <laughs> there we go i was waiting God. for that um if you guys are just tuning in we have a guest here his name's jaw honey um he has crazy stories a lot of background he, he brought his whole resume with us and we're just breaking it down a little bit um jaw honey is one of kyle's friends and he brought him here tonight to talk about uh, his just his life experiences. Um, you know, he broke his jaw, so that's part one of the reasons why his name is Jaw Honey. Uh, doing you know a practice run for like Ninja Warrior, right? Uh, something like that. Something yeah. like that. Yeah. Something yeah. like that. Yeah. <laughs> and then he also was an Old Spice commercial. You guys can go to what Jaw Honey TV. Jaw Honey TV, either the website or on Instagram. Jaw Honey, J A W. H O N E Y dot T V. There you go. And it's a it's a remarkable story. I mean, this guy only had twenty bucks in his pocket and he took the opportunity, you know, to drive up with strangers seven hours away to like it's not even guaranteed. You know, you gotta you gotta hit the script and he got it, man. You know, it's it's just it's a cool thing. Uh, before we went on break though, he was talking about how he went to Chafee, right, to do the theater and stuff. Mm-hmm. And uh, Kyle wants to continue that about so we have a mutual friend, Star Cali. Yeah. Uh, CEO of Liberate Justice Entertainment and Cloud Kill. Uh, your very first Instagram post, um, you were at a show ran by Star. How did that go? You remember <laughs> it that? Is, it is the very first post. That was probably <laughs> the first show she did. I don't know anything before oh, that. Um, yeah. yeah, Star yeah, Cali. She um, she's an OG with like the emo scene which is like a new wave emo scene right now i mean that's the way i like emo rappers and stuff not only but that's you know that's what's going on um yeah that's our mutual friend which is funny oh well not funny how i met her through a mutual friend but uh yeah me and kyle met today we should clarify but (laughs) um so we are definitely new friends and we're all yeah but um we are now mutual friends to the person that is mutual friends with the person who got me my first show with Star mm-hmm. Cali of Cloud Kill, and that was the first Cloud Kill show I did was 2018, um, yeah. I think December or something. December like. 16th. December 16th. Yeah, Kyle's yeah. been doing now his research. Now I know. I always do my first research. post. Yeah. December 16th. No, you said this. No, I'm kidding. Yeah. No, uh, yeah, that is definitely, and that was one of the first images of performance. So uh, it is like in terms of music, and the way it happened was our mutual friend like passed away. And Star Cali, uh, Cloud Kill hit me up saying, hey, I don't know if you know this, but uh, this happened. And they also got you the show with me. So nice, you know, to meet you. Do you want to do it? <laughs> and that was the first show that was presented to me. And I did it and I've done it like whatever many times, at least three or four times, in my, whatever it was. But um, there's another one coming up, hopefully. Yeah, February twelfth. Hopefully she gets me. She books me. But um, I'll talk to her. Yeah, that be. Th- you <laughs> should totally talk to her. Be like, she'll get me. That's not the issue. Uh, you'll see. Yeah. But um, yeah. Uh, shout out Cloud Kill. I did a lot of cool shows there. I met a lot of cool people, and uh, you can tell it's growing. And I've met some people that I'm. S- I still talk to through the shows. One of them, yeah. uh, Jason Alessi. Shout out Jason Alessi. Uh. Yes, I met him at the first show, and now it's been whatever three or whatever years. 
Um, yeah, shout out Cloud Kill. I don't know what else I should. Uh, hey, it's been getting bigger and bigger. Like yeah, uh, every show, it's a bigger headliner, verified yeah. type artist. So uh, you know, shouts to her. She's doing a really cool thing. Yeah, I know she's doing shows with Lil Tracy. Ex- yeah, stuff yeah. like uh, yeah, like stuff sh- like that, like big stuff, like Lil 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 Peeps Crew and different things like that. So yeah, she's like clout kill yeah, type shit. Seriously, I I don't yeah. know how she does it. She's she's she has her own magic. Yeah, she does. Yeah, yeah that's how clout kill is. Sometimes you wonder it. how she does it, but she does it. it. It happens, and then you see her at the next event, and you're like, hey, this was even better. Yeah, <laughs> every time. Hey, this is better. She's yeah. like, all right, stop it. You said that the last five times. And hopefully, I continue. You know, why wouldn't you want it to be better every time? Yeah, I like that. So how how did you uh, meet her? So uh, I used to work at this venue called Clash City Station, and I was a bouncer at the time. And I moved on to stage management. And I ended up becoming a uh, part owner. Um, so you went from a bouncer to a part or- owner. Yeah, I did. I did. Um, and so uh, when I was stage manager, uh, she did shows under Liberate Justice Entertainment, which was another business that she has. And so she kind of wanted to break off a little bit from that. And then she started Cloud Kill. And so that's that's where he met her. But uh, yeah, I've, I've known her for a while. She's done a lot of shows. She's, she does a lot, of, a lot of video work and a lot of interviews. Yeah, she uh, videographer edits and whatever they do in that scene they, she does it pretty much graphic design whatever yeah uh what did i, what did I tell you well how come she's not here tonight is she uh i i plan on inviting her to the show as a matter of fact i plan on doing more business with her this year i was gonna start like you know branching out and actually working with her but then COVID hit right and, and that's gonna so stop some things but to be honest i don't i yeah. don't like any excuses anymore i just yeah, have no, like definitely. a abusive fall no i don't but in my men in my head i have some guy that's like disciplining me in terms of yeah. like i don't care bro i hope like it, it better work out because it's not chill if it doesn't work out for you mm. so i really don't care whatever and a lot of things you can do remotely so yeah exactly not everything like obviously performing isn't remote but well one day but i wouldn't even want to do that I like live. I mean, they did. They do uh, like virtual. Zoom, yeah, like yeah, virtual like, auditions and stuff. You know. Nah. Um, even before the pandemic hit, like I remember, I was supposed to do some. some of I that mean, stuff. the thing is, I realized like, I actually I used to wonder about movies versus theater and like the difference and like how I felt, but I could see why like you need to do balance both. And honestly, movies get w- more annoying, but you get a product out of it, right? You get the movie, but being in front of the live audience nothing tops it why because it's more pressure than it is for the camera like there's no second take so it's a lot of fun and adrenaline to get it right in front of however many people at you know the, at the theater was like what 200 but still it doesn't really matter at a certain point if you can do it in front of one person you care about or whatever you can probably do it. you should be able to do it again but if you can't then you didn't rehearse enough but uh yeah thanks uh, uh, when people usually when they're not ready or they're nervous before they you know take a test or go live or something it's because they didn't like you said they didn't rehearse enough they didn't train hard enough you know? yeah i learned that um i should have learned it earlier but the reason i avoided this stuff like until a little later in life like after high school as a kid something didn't go my way like on stage <laughs> in a kid type pageant thing and i mixed up like a line and i switched them but for me it was like the biggest mess up ever and i was like i'm not destined for this I'm never obvious. doing this again yeah i'm yeah. never doing this. this is the <laughs> most embarrassing thing even though going yeah. up there i was like my life you know like oh my goodness this is the best thing i'm about to do i can't believe i'm about to go kill it up there and i didn't even do bad but most the audience might even care it's a kid's thing like we're talking right, second grade right. but i'll tell you for a very long time that dictated whether i would even consider that this is for me because i also saw someone i care about freeze up on the news and uh, it was for their business and promoting it. And once that happened, I knew that, like, the only way I can return to this is to give it, like, training. Because I have, I realized, I'm like, clearly you got to respect the people that do this stuff. Right, There's no yeah. way they're winging it. At a certain point, you're like, I could do that. But at a certain time, you're like, I could. Do, I, you almost consider, like, can't anyone do this? They get paid so much, blah, blah, blah. Not when somebody tells you to go 
and you have stuff you have memorized and another actor is depending on you to respond on it like no there's a reason it's training it's work and um yeah i don't know how did we get there i mean there's this quote um i can't quote on who it's by but it was basically like no one in this world yet has not in, has not gotten what they deserve like okay all these rappers okay some of them make really horrible songs and like music and not i'm not saying horrible is like but like really crappy you know like yeah not professional whatever that they, they like mumble rap whatever mm -hmm. but you wonder like oh man why are these guys so rich you know what i mean there, there are people that like their like Dude, like their when style, i was a kid know? i liked the grungy screamo blah 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 that Whoa. everyone is like what are they listening to and i'm gonna tell you like that was as hot as it got really like when you're 16 to 22 years old you're looking for the new stuff of, and it, they tend to be people your age who haven't necessarily been through certain things like yeah. i mean maybe they have certain ones are gonna go through stuff but um even just the music like how they couldn't have listened to everything out there they just you know like and your taste changes so um yeah your taste your mind and all that stuff i know for sh yeah. like some stuff sticks and some stuff it doesn't but like right now i see what's why it works it, the energy is right and the person throwing it out there the energy is right and if they like his attitude it's not necessary they don't need beethoven like yeah. no one's in on for like it doesn't matter whether you care or not or who cares they don't need beethoven I, I love it i went back to it you know eventually once you lead down certain things you're gonna find that it leads back to classical stuff because yeah. some of it was the beginning of the modern music yeah. bars and notes and that's what all this is kind of based on all the good writers are writing with you know notes and like i'm assuming the big ones are working with those type of people but what i'm saying is the new people they can get away with a lot of things yeah because the kids they don't care dude they don't know the difference a lot of time and i try to tell people this but they some people assume that like it really matters about like quality this that and i'm like dude i've heard some things that go viral on tiktok and it sounds like they recorded in the closet or whatever yeah. and um it's it, the it just hits the energy was there when it was recorded and honestly if you compare any recording to like 1960s when they were having or whatever it is back then when they were still selling cds their quality couldn't have been better than anything that we record on i would assume like if yeah, you go far yeah. back enough and they were still listening to it is my point so at a certain point if somebody likes something some things don't matter right. and that energy matters and they and you see a the behind the scenes because that's just what it is now good luck not showing your behind this everyone gets to know their favorite rapper and if they start liking them they're gonna go listen to more songs than just right. the one that went viral exactly it's a whole lot of liking somebody is and i yeah this i don't know when this happened five to ten it's always been like this but now it's on like a civilian level, level yeah. Yeah. in terms of like yeah i could keep trying you know whoever wants to can keep trying eventually to, you know maybe and one of the things might work i think it's just when you're genuine about what you make uh it's hard for someone to stop but you need talent like even those yeah, mumble rappers they i'm assuming no matter which ones you're talking about they have some type of flow that makes sense to the kids listening yeah. they can't clown him well, you like know they're young they like want to clown marketing but yeah. if the song is clownable the kids will clown like yeah but then the the story behind the rapper backs it up too you know right uh yeah, that's how i feel not even um going back to what you said like you used to listen to like that screamo emo stuff right yeah um and like some people are like why like you can't even understand them and i talked to one of my old co-workers and that's what he listens to he actually is in a band that does that and he's like sometimes it's not even about the words that they say it's it's like you it's said vibe. yeah it's the vibe and it's the, the energy, energy. And energy one of my bring. songs some people will just be like hey this one's a vibe and that I, I went for that because I was like, I don't need oh, some masterpiece. Sometimes people are listening to stuff that like, um, it's just a vibe. Yeah. You could leave it on and they're, they're not bothered by it. And that's as much as they need sometimes because they might be chilling, smoking, yeah, whatever. Some ganja, yeah. 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 So they need something that's not bothering them. If they leave it on. That's fine. Like, so um, back when I worked at Clash City Station, we had this show and it was... If you bring the most people who scream the loudest at the end, you want an award. 
So we Ugh. have this band. I don't ever have enough friends to do that for well, me. Well, <laughs> here's here's the thing. There's this band from San Diego, the, the furthest band out. Okay, everyone else was from Fontana. Locals. You know, we, local. Like, uh, and this band from San Diego didn't bring anyone out. However, they went to the mall and they said, hey, I want everyone to come with us. And then they went to the Gentleman's Club. They got a whole bunch of girls, whole bunch of people to come to the show. It's like, hey, we have a show. Just come out. And everyone's like, all right, let's go out. And this and and like this band probably brought like 100 people. And everyone was just having a good time. And nowhere near were they the best band. But it was how they marketed themselves and how they brought people in. Dude, we just gave out the award. We're like, this is not even a competition anymore. What did they do right? What uh, was it? The stage performance, or like afterwards, they just clicked with everybody? Or? They just clicked with everybody, and how? I don't know how they did it. Well, they, once you have a good show, yeah. and the people are there for a show, they're gonna like you more. Exactly. So, so. I've had a, a good enough experiences with that to, but yeah, that it could that could help. Liking yeah, you definitely. more is my. Like, it, the show has to go well, but at the same time, liking you might go further, dude. Yeah. yeah. I have, like, that you're just there so, to support them, you know, yeah. more than anything. <laughs> and, like, because I went to a Kevin Gates concert. Oh, yeah. And and I got six jobs, right? That's him. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, like that. I learned from him that. I'm like, I got six jobs, too. Like, you got... Six, if, six if jobs, Gates, I don't get phones. tired. Yeah, yeah, I don't get tired. But uh, what I'm saying is, uh, like, like I, I waited, like, four hours for this dude to come out. And it's like all the other rappers, like there were some that I, I recognized, that I acknowledged, like, dang, they're, they're pretty good. But it's like, because I was going for him, dude, I was like, ah! you know, I was screaming. Yeah. Like, there's a bunch of guys that are like really cool and like it was a good vibe and I, and I want to go back and like look them up. But like, I went there for him, mm -hmm. you know, I didn't go there for those guys. Mm -hmm. So going back to San Diego, like they, bro, that, that's cool, man. I like that story. Yeah. They brought people, they brought randoms, but you know, they're like, they brought everybody. Like there was like homeless people there. <laughs> there the were best, girls the from the gentleman band. club, half naked. They go with you. There were people city. from the mall, like Tyler Mall, like just random people. Like this old couple came in. He's like, "We're here to see the Montel Jordans," and we're like, "What?" <laughs> 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 hey, we like Montel. Yeah, like titties hanging out and stuff. No, no. <laughs> and you know what? Honestly, I'm pretty sure that wasn't their first time doing it. Like, no. they know. Let's go to the mall and let's go to the gentleman's club. We'll bring some people, we'll bring some girls, and for sure, we will top it off. Like, they yeah. knew what they were doing, you know? Yeah, exactly. San Diego, baby. Like, come no, on. No, once yeah, you like, come out from out. another place, I feel like they've been through enough things to know how to get people to like them and get yeah. them going. Like, I've seen people that have got, like, five people going to the point where they they lifted them. You know, like, yeah. it, they just, some people adjust. I don't know. I would assume it's experience, getting good at stuff. Yeah, it could be natural too, but to be honest, I I can't say that I'm everything goes well for me because I'm a natural. Because I know that I <laughs> had to jump through some hoops to get good at, and I spent enough time to get better at stuff. There yeah, I had a natural motivation maybe for it. That's probably. It. Yeah, there you go. Finding your answers. Yeah. I mean, if, I mean, whatever works, you know, that's tar that's part of the show. So I'm glad that works for you. Uh, we do. We're gonna be closing here in two minutes. Um, so I'm gonna shout out second chance thrift store one more time so check them out guys yeah it. on ukai boulevard next to subs usa there you go grab grab a sandwich bro take yeah, a stroll a look sandwich. around take a stroll because like you're not going to be Eat broke the cages yeah you're not going to be broke going <laughs> to a second chance thrift store you know what i mean no. and usa so subs, good yeah good food good people go check them out um hey john honey it was honestly nice to meet you this is for dude literally we came here at 6 30 and I'm, I'm glad you came good. over, dude. There's a lot of good yeah, stories it's that been you brought. A I'm yeah. very glad. Yeah, that was short, right? I feel like yeah, it seems short. Yeah, it seems you know, short. It's been an hour. Yeah, so. time runs by fast when you're having fun. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Think, I had a great time. I appreciate you guys hearing me out, whatever yeah. for whatever reason you heard me out, and uh, uh, great mutual friendship now. Yeah, right. Go. Uh, go ahead and tell the people where they can find you again. Uh, at Jaw Honey. That J A W H O N E Y, one word. You'll find me on like any platform if you just put that in there. But yeah, jawhoney.tv is the website and the Instagram. There's two of them. Yep. Jawhoney yeah. is where you'll find it. Okay. Yeah, man. Go, go. go check him out. Go look at his Old Spice commercial, his one hit wonder, his <laughs> liner. Hey, I'm going to I'm gonna find another hit, okay? Yeah, I hope go. that's not my one hit. <laughs> that was it. Yeah. Oh, you're like, oh, man. Yeah. I, that, I just got started. That was the first thing that happened. There you go. <laughs> 
All right, you guys. Well, I'm going to have Pauly Boy, our board op, take it away. We're going to be listening to Sunday Best, even though it is Wednesday, but that is my theme song. Uh, you guys are listening to Whatever Works on KCAA, 1050 AM, 102.3 and 106.5. I'm Sam Works. Kyle Kerrigan. Jaws at Jaw Honey. There you go. We're tuning out, guys. I'll see you guys on Sunday and not next Wednesday, but the following week. Have a good night. Stay blessed and happy Wednesday. Hey, feel it. get it wrong relax i seen this in a movie i'm coming up just like a scream i'm running out just like a dream they don't really want to see me in beam think that it's stolen i got me a beam i got some niggas mad i don't know make some songs like right on the phone just my pop up then i'm feeling like sunday just like a play but we hopping like bunny i hop in her tummy you don't think it's funny there's no reason that you know should be running just like a crack it i'm up Ooh. gotta get rid of this stuff Ooh. shout out my life it been tough yeah. gotta be pregnant with love yeah. All in her gut, I'm fucking it up Just like a turkey, I'm getting this stuff She could be skinny or she could be buff Wishing her well, but she ran out of luck I'm getting well, I'm feeling well This time next year, I might be in cell I really can't tell, I won't get no fail I'm thugging, but I want to be hard to tell Just like a pig, I don't fuck Now that she pregnant, she sucks Front row seat, the street, I'm stuck Giving me fuck, but you don't give a fuck Blowing a blunt, bitch, bitch, so what? Making me sit in titties or butt I want it all, I want a ball Give me the ball, I'm winning it all this time last year I needed a scream Woke up from nightmare and turned it a dream I want a beam, I got a beam Say what I mean